This is Lovick's First News. Just having a uh, sidebar conversation with Christine Cas- Casanova. <laughs> it, it was just like, I, I know there's not that many Casanovas right. you know, in Lubbock. But anyway, my son dated a, a girl that was her second cousin. Oh, that's cool. And when she came here to visit us at Christmas time mm-hmm. a few years ago, she didn't know that they actually lived here. Oh, we lived in Austin at, at, for years, and I think everyone in the family just thought we still lived there. So, Oh, okay. <laughs> sort of you know, they said, keep Austin weird. Mm-hmm. Casanova said you could have it. <laughs> Don't right. have a whole lot of family reunions, huh? <laughs> not Obviously not. Otherwise, they'd be a little bit more up to date on who's right, where. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, Christine, uh, just uh, – okay, I know you're landscape architecture, but, you know, just for argument's sake, what are your credentials? Oh, okay. Well, I um, practiced interior design for 20 years and decided to reinvent. So I went back to school at Texas Tech and studied landscape architecture with a focus in sustainability. And I graduated from Tech. Four years ago, and I've been teaching on faculty in the design sequence of courses since then. Nice. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking the most common issues that face homeowners and people in commercial real estate applications as far as landscape architecture is, <clears throat> I think, A, their beds and bed preparation and what they put in the beds. Because most people... You're supposed to have native soil, and, and like usually the detail is going to show like native soil about, mm, what, about six inches below grade, four inches, three, four inches of topsoil on top of that, and then maybe three or four inches of mulch that helps keep the water in. But, you know, more or just as, if not more important, are the plants that we're using to put in the beds. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, you, I mean, what we focus on around here is water conservation, right? That's our big right. deal kind of arid studies. And then one of the things that we focus on at Texas Tech and all of our programs, this is Ag Awareness Week. So in all of the agricultural realm in terms of science and study, a lot of it's focused on how to conserve water. So we talk a lot about, you know, foundational things that help the soil, the quality of the soil, using mulch, the kind of plants we plant. Because it's not one dimensional. You know, you can get the soil really great, but if you don't have the right kind of plant for the right kind of, say, system or ecosystem that you're working in or climate, it's not going to it's not going to go well. It's not going to be a productive garden in terms of beauty and aesthetics and foliage and all the things that we, you know, wildlife habitat. None of those things are going to happen for us if we don't have the right plant in the right, you know, condition of soil with a barrier like you talked about mulch. You know, Tom was saying earlier in our little off-topic conversation, people go to the store and they buy one bag of mulch and they think, you know, they can cover their entire yard in one bag of mulch. I'm what, done, honey. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but what really matters is that we get a good, you know, three to four inch layer. Now, you don't want to smother your plants. Right. But that mulch acts in so many ways to help the plant and the soil And the moisture retention. So you get, you know, the benefit of keeping the soil cool so the earthworms and all of those creatures that are in there can do their work without being stressed out or go deeper into the soil and, you know, neglect that root zone that's so important. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't get the moisture retention because if you don't have mulch, the soil's really hot. And so the water is out. It's leaving the soil. The plants are working harder to keep the moisture so that that help keeps the plants less stressed right mm-hmm. the the mo- and then there's the whole just water retention barrier if we get any moisture at all that ever falls out of the sky and i think they call that rain last time i checked <laughs> <laughs> you know it, it that mulch absorbs that water and holds that that rainwater and helps kind of it percolate into the soil instead of just running straight off so you know that mulch that you talked about is multi-dimensional in terms of its benefit to right. keeping our water on it, our plants and if it's a, a three or four inch layer can that also keep weeds or grasses oh, from yeah and then there's all the extra benefit of you know keeping the keeping the um the weeds down the intrusion of the seeds that blow in because mm-hmm. god knows we've got a lot of those traveling around in our right. west texas wind so there's you know there's a lot of benefit to mulch as far as um you know the soil conservation and moisture right. conservation and labor conservation because right. you're not out there pulling weeds. What's the best type of mulch to buy? Because there's so many different mm, kinds. I really think it depends on the application and the aesthetic. You know, some in some instances you want that rig, real big, fat, barky texture. In some instances you want a really fine chipped mulch. In some cases, you know, and, and within limitation because then you, you start talking about heat load is the granite and decomposed granite, which can 
can really be nice in terms of the way it looks, but it, that inorganic, you know, like rock versus wood mulch, they're two. Com- they bring two completely different things well, to the, the table. Well, a lot of the rock products and things like that, when people put them in the beds, when they heat up, and they don't have to even be <clears throat> in direct sunlight, they will radiate the soil temp. In mm-hmm. like I built a pondless waterfall in my backyard mm-hmm. with three huge, huge ceramic pots mm-hmm. and you know i filled them with um i filled them with big rock and then they i rocked it in i'm thinking oh it's maintenance free well the pondless waterfall there's a reservoir and there's probably between the pots and what's in the reservoir 300 gallons well if i fill that up on a 100 degree day and i don't keep the water running in there it'll evaporate it in, in about an hour hour and a half yeah. it'll run dry it doesn't take it's long does it no we just don't we really underestimate how hot and particularly in the summer how hot it is and we we have what an average of 12 to 17 percent humidity here right and so you that know? makes it evaporate yeah. even faster right right that's really working against us so mm-hmm. you know there's just in the in the realm of you know garden design or landscape design or landscape architecture you know, how you plan these water features is really important, too. You want to be really sensible about them. You know, a lot of people get excited about landscaping their garden and doing their yards and putting in these fountains, and even in front of small commercial applications, you know. Mm-hmm. But we really have to think about, well, does that make sense in West Texas? Does that make sense here in Lubbock? And how can we handle that? Not so much. In a lot I of know. And I want a water feature so bad in oh, my backyard. But you know, I don't. The, you, know? you know, there are a lot of, but but we don't have to live without water. I mean, one of the things that we talk about in Zeric design, you know, not zero design, but Zeric, X-E-R-I-C. Mm-hmm. Um, and that does not necessarily mean cactus. Okay, when you right. say Zeric design, we're talking about Zeric meaning water-wise, very right. water not efficient. Right, ze- a lot of people call it zero scaping, like zero, like right. the number zero. It's No, no, no. No. It, no. You know, that would be nothing. That would be dry. The zero scaping is zero. Zeric scaping is just... You know these these water conservation and 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 land conservation efforts that are associated with low rainfall areas, and you know where you plant the plants that don't require a lot of water. We call them xerophytic plants, and 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 planting those and using those appropriately. But going back to this with the water feature, what you can do is you can have a like a, a recirculating pot, right? So it just pours over the edge of the pot, goes to the reservoir basin, and gets pumped mm-hmm. back up into and out of the pot. So you have a small surface I area. I have one of those. Yeah, and those see that's appropriate and you can set the the pressure on the on the pump and it'll give you some nice noise cuz that's what we like about water. We like the noise, right? We mm-hmm. like to hear it. Right, right. You know, kind of yeah, you don't have to know it's not a roaring, you know, creek through your backyard. Just right. a little just be small a about it. Of water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I have to go to the restroom now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you hear water, you got to pee. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. We're talking with Christine Casanova, Landscape Architecture.